Welcome to Awakened Titans Podcast with Lily Patrescu. Mind-blowing conversations with influential business titans sharing how you can manifest abundance, love, joy, success through quantum awakening, quantum manifestation, quantum healing, quantum miracles, exponential business growth, and innovative products and services. Discover how to make passive income from commercial property investing in today's session with Chris Price. And he's a seasoned property investor, and he's a dynamic managing partner at Boost Capital Group, partnering in efforts to empower busy professionals and entrepreneurs by preserving and enhancing their wealth through top-tier passive real estate investments. With a robust background and uh, as a successful corporate executive and real estate investor and entrepreneur, Chris brings a wealth of experience to steering Boost Capital Group's success. He's also a distinguished corporate professional with over 20 years of experience in the life science uh, life sciences industry. And he serves as, as a pharmaceutical executive at a top 15 pharmaceutical company, ensuring patients access to life-saving medications. Beyond his corporate role, he uh, is um, offering hands-off commercial real estate opportunities to safeguard the retirement of busy professionals and entrepreneurs. He also is very proud to have passive and active investments in 1,266 commercial multifamily and single family units across strategic markets in Texas, Georgia, Alabama, and Pennsylvania. And he is also very proud to empower others through real estate investing. He hosts the Wealth Mindset and Real Estate Investing Virtual Meetup, fostering a community of over 1,100 members. And he's very proud to be married and to reside in White Plains, New York, with his wife, Allison, and their two children. And the first question is, what is the secret to your success? Well, thank you for the wonderful introduction and thank you for uh, allowing me to be on your platform to share with your community today. Um, look, the, the secret to, to my success is really, um, it is really focused on my drive and ambition. Um, you know, I want to maximize my time here on this earth and I feel like all of us are really, uh, you know, granted an opportunity to to be here and to make a difference, and um, and with that motivation, it really drives me to 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 it drives my passion, it drives my my energy, my focus to be able to to help achieve and pursue success. And for and for that, what's what's my driving force? My family is my why. Um, when I think about the things that that I'm currently doing um, in in the realms that I am active in, both in my corporate career as well as in my career uh, a, as a real estate investor, helping others invest passively into real estate, leaving a lasting legacy for my family is something that's critically important to me. So those are the things that motivate me and my success. Thank you. So, how can entrepreneurs make passive income? from commercial real estate investing? Well, this is a great question and, and it's one that I get often. Um, when, when I go out and I talk to folks, one of the things that I learned uh, along my journey is that we are all conditioned and learned that in terms of investing, the, the traditional ways of investing in the United States that they talk about is you have to you know invest in the stock market. And you know when you work for a company, you have to put it in a company-sponsored 401k program, or maybe you have opportunities to invest into, into uh, different types of retirement vehicles. Um, but along the way, uh, of my journey, what I started to learn about was the fact that you can actually invest in real estate, but but in investing in real estate, there's so many different ways to do so. There's single family investing, there's fix and flips, there are there's a self storage, there's so many different things. Um, but for for me, what I came to discover is that I can actually invest um, in in real estate, but it didn't have to be 
in single family, it could actually be in multifamily. And in particular, it can be in commercial multifamily. So a commercial multifamily is defined as five units and up. And when we think about uh, when we think about that, it, the the opportunity to be able to invest in assets um, that where we think about there being a need for people have, need, needing a roof over their head, um, this is something that is really Im important. So dialing in the focus of what type of asset that you want to focus on, for me, it landed into into the commercial multifamily housing and being able to uh, to to focus for folks to be able to diversify their portfolio outside of the financial markets was something um, that that is really important. So that guided me to my space and being able to invest into real estate. And I started out as a passive investor, investing in other people's syndications and other people's funds. And from there had some success. And now today I'm, I'm working along, uh, working to help other people do the same. Thank you so much. So tell us how it works exactly. So the way that it works is uh, it, we pass we work with uh, passive investors to partner with them to acquire large commercial multifamily uh, investment properties. And the way that it works, essentially, if you think about it, it's almost like a single family fix and flip that people may see on certain television shows. Um, but it, instead of us one single unit, this is a, at an apartment complex that has a you know let's say a hundred units or more. And though it typically takes about three to five years to to uh, renovate the property to enhance it, maybe you're you're increasing the income and reducing the expenses. But all while you're doing that, you're receiving passive income distribution in the form of the the income from the property that the rents are that that the property is generating through rents and other ways that it generates income let's say for example like a trash valet or maybe through pet fees or some other parking fees that that happen within that property and then um, over time that continues that business plan continues to get executed and the way that that works from 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 that standpoint is that we actually have a network of of the best operators in the best markets throughout the country here in the United States where people uh where where we uh get their opportunities. They come to us and we get a chance to evaluate their opportunities through our network of operators. And when we analyze them and they um, they meet our criteria, we then fully vet them. We then decide on partnering with them. And then we bring those, op those uh, opportunities to our investors. And as I mentioned, typically it takes about three to five years for the property, uh, for everything to turn over while you're receiving cash flow distributions. But the big, um, the big payout happens typically at the end of the deal when we sell the property and the and those proceeds of the sale go to all of the investors in the, in that particular investment opportunity. Thank you. Is this like a crowdfunding opportunity? And if yes, how much is the minimum required for investors to put in in order to um, see a significant return on their investment? That's a great question. So there are some similar similarities to crowdfunding. This is more of this is what's called a syndication or in our case, a fund of funds. And it's a private placement. So what the benefits of this and private placement real estate and private equity real estate, I should say, is that the investors get a chance to take advantage of, of all of the van the, the benefits of real estate investing. So the cash flows, as I mentioned before, but not only the cash flows, they get a chance to take advantage of the tax benefits. And the proceeds from the from the appreciation that the property when it sells, um, they get a chance to take advantage of those things, and then um, that helps with the diversification. And then, as it relates to minimum uh, investment opportunities, um, we're talking about generally speaking, fifty thousand dollars are the minimum investments for these uh, for these investments. And what we look to be able to do is we look to help investors uh, double their uh, their investment in that five-year time frame. So that $50,000 US dollar investment, um, I, w if all goes well, according to our plans, um, think that will turn into $100,000 as an example of, of a typical investment. Thank you. Are there any guarantees that this is going to happen or um, you... Um 
what what it, what are the typical guarantees if anything that this is likely to happen or yeah yeah there there are no guarantees uh, and as with all investments all investments carry some risk and i would never guarantee anything for for any for any investor for that matter um there there are risks that are involved in, in, in investing and and certainly there are risk in in real estate investing however um you know we are looking to be able to mitigate those risks so what do i mean by that there are typically operational risk there are market related risk um and there are um um, there are uh, sort of uh, financing type of risks. So when we talk about risk mitigation and, and the and and the challenges or the the things that may come up, you may have an asset that is in a fantastic um, market. Um, however, if the operator of that property isn't experienced and and doesn't know what they're doing, they can have a gem of an asset, but they can but they can mismanage it, and that could certainly not favor well for the property. From an operational standpoint, um, when when it comes to operating the, these properties, um, you want to make sure that p you have uh, seasoned investors that know what they're doing, that know how to navigate through the different uh, the different uh, challenges that may may come up. For example, there there may you know are they are they prepared for uh, any potential downturns? Are they prepared for? Um, uh, are they prepared for you know potential market volatility that may come what about what about new supply to the market how will that affect your your risk all of these things are things that we we look into very thoroughly and make sure that the the invest the operators that we're partnering with are doing that due dil diligence to make sure that you know, we we turn over every stone to understand what if if certain factors take place within the market or within the operations that the property is going to maintain its value and then finally from a financing standpoint um, there, there are risks there. What type of debt financing is being used to acquire the asset? Is it fixed interest rate loans, uh, long-term fixed interest rate loans? Is it variable loans? These are important things for people to know because if it is a variable interest rate, um, you know, loan as an example, is that you know we we have to pay attention to that in the U.S. What we've recognized over the past. Uh, you know, at, over the past couple uh, year or so now, uh, since the Federal Reserve here has increased interest rates um, over over uh, multiple times, over eleven times, and over and on just under a year, or just over a year, I should say, um, this has significantly increased the interest rate for those and for those operators who had variable interest rate loans that is creating quite a challenge for them to hold on to those properties, and so. They didn't. They either didn't get rate caps, or they didn't uh, have. They they didn't have the right strategy or reserves to be able to withstand the uh, the volatility in the interest rate markets. And so, when we look at things, we want to make sure that you know the financing makes sense for that asset. And if they are using variable debt, for example, that they have. Um, rate caps that they purchase so that the interest rate will never exceed, um, you know, that, uh, that the amount that, um, could potentially put the property, um, uh, at risk. And so those are the different things that you want people looking into to make sure that your asset is in, uh, is, is all the opportunities, let's say, are stacked in your favor and you can increase the likelihood of the success of the project. Thank you so much. So let's take this example of the fifty thousand uh, dollars that people may put in. Um, is there what is the amount of cash flow they might be able to receive, and from what time frame? Is it within three months? Is it within a year? When do they start receiving cash flow, and what is the likely amount they could potentially get per month? And also regarding to your um, your expected return of, let's say, $100,000 over the five years, do you mean that's the price that you are likely to potentially sell the property at? Or are you saying that would be the total approximate amount that they are likely to make, including the cash flow? 
Yes, it's it's more of the latter. Not, and, and so I'll answer your last question first. So when it comes to the proceeds from the 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 returns from the property, an investor will receive you know, in addition they'll receive two key things as it relates to direct income. They'll receive distributions or or dividends that the property is paying month over month. And in that cash flow distribution, um, they they will receive they will receive that um, typically to answer your your question that you have. I'll see if I can stitch them together. That typically uh, distribution uh, payments begin one to three months after the close of the property. And and after that, that take place takes place. Generally speaking, um, they will receive the uh, the cash flow distributions what what you what investors should know is that those cash flow distributions um in year one are typically a bit lower on average we're, we're looking to be able to strike an 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 average uh cash on cash return of about eight percent so that means on a on a it, let's call it one hundred thousand dollars for just simplicity of math one would expect to receive on average eight thousand dollars per year throughout the the life of the of the investment so that's on the cash flow side of things when it comes to the equity or for the proceeds from the sale of the property that's the other portion of the income that an investor will receive and it's based on their proportional share because you have to recognize that in these types of investments investors may come in at different amounts some investors may come in with the minimum fifty thousand dollars some may come in with a hundred thousand dollars some may come in with a million dollars but in and their proceeds are from from the sale of the property are based on their proportional share of that they'll and that that will come typically at the end at the end of the property when when it sells and and the investor will be able to have a combination of both the cash flows that they've received throughout the hold of the property typically on a monthly or quarterly basis and they'll have the proceeds from the sale of the property and those things combined are what what come to the total return Thank you. Is there any benefit to do this syndication versus just buying one property and having you manage the same process? Yeah, so it's I'm so glad that you asked this question because you know one of the things that that's important, what we're talking about here is we're talking about passive investing. So we're talking about an opportunity where where people can invest in other people's deals and they get to be completely hands off which is as you read in the bio which is what we focus on and that hands off investing for people that are busy professionals and entrepreneurs who love the idea of investing in real estate but don't necessarily love the idea of the what we call the tenants and termites and toilets being able to be hands off is actually a really important thing for for them to do and and they can they can relinquish that responsibility if you will to the operator of the property who's doing all of the heavy lifting all of the works they're managing the tenants they're managing the contractors that are executing the business plan they are um you know dealing with any issues that that the property has you as a passive investor shouldn't have to hear any of those of those things you should just sit back and collect and once you as a passive investor investor have done your due diligence to vet the operator uh, to vet the the property that it aligns with your investment criteria then you should be uh, passive in that deal and you're relinquishing that opportunity but i'll tell you that your your question made me think about you know who this is not for so for those people who love to be hands-on and you have to choose the paint color and you have to select the property and all the the things that go on you like being hands-on with things this is probably not the type of investment investment for those types of people because they want to control everything but in limited partner or the passive investments where you are a limited partner or an lp you are you are by default giving up those rights so you are just purely a financial partner if you will where you're investing into someone else's deal who is who is a professional systematically executing that deal to provide you with the return Thank you. What are the top mistakes entrepreneurs make when uh, trying to invest passively in commercial real estate? Yeah, I would I would say, man, there, there are so many things. But if I were to narrow it down, um, you know, investing with emotions, um, I think, you know, that's uh, that's really 
uh, a, a, a challenging things that entrepreneurs um, have. Yeah, yes, there you, we're we're thinking about um, you know emotional type of things when people want to invest. And this this what's what one should know is that there's really a lot of thought and strategy that goes into these these assets. So what do I mean by that? I, I mean that in the case of being able to select assets you know, and, and markets, we we really focus on really key key criteria to market selection. So we are looking at st- areas that have strong job growth, strong population growth, and a strong demand for housing. You know, following headlines of, of chasing um, chasing places that you may have heard about in the news that say, oh, this market is growing rapidly and you want to invest there. You you want to really make sure that you're not just chasing things that you think are appreciating in value because that's not the strategy or that's not a winning formula. You can get lucky once or twice um, in terms of chasing things just purely off of appreciation, but investors uh, and entrepreneurs should really focus on investing for cash flow and investing with where the markets have strong fundamentals where are the jobs going where are the people moving they're moving to where the jobs are going and then what's the demand like for the housing there is this a market where people are leaving are people moving there? Is there is there a high demand for housing? Not only the uh, single family housing, but for the apartment uh, living as well. These are the great factors, if you will, that really help to stack the deck in the favor of those those busy professionals out there and entrepreneurs that are looking to be able to um, you know uh, get get access to great deals. Those are things that they should really consider to not be on that side of uh, of uh, of just investing with their emotions. Thank you. Can you tell us three of your most successful deals you have personally invested in that you uh, you can share with us as case studies of what we could potentially uh, invest in as well, or as an example, I mean. Yeah, so I'll, I'll share one. So uh, a one in one particular property, um, we focused. We partnered with a great with the top tier operator to fo- uh, to acquire assets in the Houston, Texas uh, market uh, in the United States. And um, this this asset um, was uh, was was acquired with very favorable tax benefits um, uh, right from the from the jumps, and so that gave the gave us the opportunity to to acquire it at a at a lower uh, amount but in addition to that it provided an opportunity for income a higher income right away as well and so with that type of uh you know uh, headwind or, or not headwind but tail wow uh, wind if you will that that's giving it uh giving us a, a lot of um and um sort of uh strength going into that investment it was really a, a great opportunity to get immediate cash flow right from from the jump and and then just having a great operator that is that is systematically operating the property making sure that that the quality of the asset is maintained um, improving the 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 uh, the resident experience um, executing on the business plan those are really important things that help to make this investment um a, a really positive Positive one. We're still in this investment, um, just just a, a few months in um, now, but all things are going very well with this particular um, opportunity. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of other investment opportunities that that we are a part of, um, we are. There's another investment uh, that I'll share just as an example, just to give people an opportunity to understand how um, a value is created in a, in a particular deal. So there's another deal that we're focused on um, that I invested in as a passive investor in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And what's what's nice about this is this this uh, particular deal. Um, one of the strategies that was looked at here was looking to reduce the expenses on the property. And one of the ways that they focused on reducing the expenses was actually through switching out um, high water use toilets um, in each of the units 
from to low water usage toilets and just simply executing that strategy will helps to sa save about a third of the cost of wa of the water bill on a monthly basis so in terms of value being created there are so many ways that that this happens and when that value is created just to give you a give you in the audience an example those are the ways that that value gets passed on to you as a passive in investor so you you want to be working with a team that is really looking at how to be able to navigate through those things, how to come up with an effective business plan that's going to increase the income of the property and reduce the expenses, just as an example, because when that happens, that, that income gets passed on to all of us as passive investors, and that's how we all win. Thank you. Can you tell us how wealth mindset and real estate investing, the community that you have, um, how can new members benefit from this uh, knowledge that you're sharing there? Yeah, so so this community was created really uh, a few years ago when I was going when I was an initially entering into um, to the the space and just learning so much and you know and uh, you know sharing a lot about what I was doing as well and what I found is that in my casual discussions with friends, families, colleagues, um, etc., that there was really a, a a big demand for wanting to learn more about um, investing and passively into real estate and you know, increasing your wealth mindset and your financial intelligence. And once I recognized that, I really saw it as an opportunity for me to, to, to be able to uh, sort of establish a thought leadership platform that would allow me to, to go and provide that value to an audience. And so what, what we're able to do, similar uh, to what you're doing, we invite uh, expert speakers and guests to come on um, in a virtual community to share um, and their insights about various different things. This could be about real estate investing. It could be about investing uh, um, or how you know the value of, of cash uh, value life insurance we cover a host of different topics but the important thing is is that it, it helps to people grow their knowledge and um their financial intelligence and their wealth mindset as i as i call it so that they can become uh, more savvy investors great so tell us where our audience can find you in order to connect with you and find out more information about commercial real estate investing. Yes, well, thank you for, for that opportunity. People can find me. I'm very active on LinkedIn. So you can find me, Christopher Price, uh, on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, Christopher Price at, uh, MBA is if you want to really narrow it down, because there might be a few of us out there. But I'm, I'm very active on, on LinkedIn. I'm also, uh, I also have a, uh, a free webinar on, on our website. And so if you go to Boost Capital, uh, boostmycapital.com um, you'll be able to uh, find uh, my uh, my our website there you'll be able to uh, gain access to uh, my free webinar training that people can utilize to be able to uh, learn a little bit more about passive investing thank you and lastly what's your message for entrepreneurs worldwide Wow, this is such a great question. And, and my message to entrepreneurs worldwide is to really uh, continue to, to persevere First and foremost, uh, um, entrepreneurship is not easy. It is, uh, it is, it is hard, um, but it's worth it on the other end. But beyond that, I encourage you to, as you achieve, continue achieving success, to also realize the importance of being able to diversify your portfolio so that you can boost your capital. Thank you. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you. Follow us for more interviews with world's most influential business titans, providing you with the insights to awaken to your full potential so you can get paid to be yourself, find true happiness and manifest anything you desire.